Okay, boys and girls, if you missed today's uh, Zoom meeting, we did uh, Lesson 2 in Module 8, the Bipole Numbers by Unit Fractions, and we're going to go over that so that you know how to do this before you submit your Google Slide answers for 12-15. Okay, in this lesson, we're going to continue dividing um, with fractions, except today we're going to be using a model and then using a, uh, a multiplication related to the division to uh, help us answer that question also. Okay, so let's look at our I can statement. I can represent division of a whole number by a unit fraction using a visual model and equations. All right, so we're going to begin with reading this. We want to read it, underline our question, and then uh, figure out what we know and what we don't know and use that to find our answer. So Cat and Ann complete a new obstacle course. The course is two miles long if they're in an obstacle every one-fourth of a mile. How many obstacles are there? Well, we don't know how many obstacles there are, but we can find it out because we know that the course is two miles long, and every one-fourth of a mile, there is an obstacle place for somebody to uh, encounter. So it asks us to first write an equation. Well, we know that the dividend, which is what we're dividing up, is going to be two miles, so that's going to go first. And we know that we're going to divide that uh, dividend up into one-fourth of a mile. So I'm going to divide it out by one-fourth. And then when we get our answer, that's going to tell us how many obstacles that we have. And it says let P stand for the number of obstacles. Okay, so they've given us a number line here that we're going to work that out with. Instead of drawing a rectangle, we're going to use a number line. All right, so um, I can see here that the dividend which is 2, is represented by the 1 and then the 2. So this shows our 2 miles, 2 whole miles. So how does the number line represent the dividend? 2 on the number line shows 2 whole miles or units represent the divisor on the number line. Draw tick marks and label the fractions. All right, so I know that each of these miles has to be divided up into fourths, and then I'm going to do that, and that's going to represent my, my divisor. Okay, each of those are divided into four equal parts, and now I'm going to label those. That's one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths, and then the one would be four-fourths, and then once I get past the 1, it's going to be 1 and 1 fourth, 1 and 2 fourths, 1 and 3 fourths, and then my 2 miles. Represent the quotient. Now the quotient is the answer. And so I can count the number of fourths that have been divided up here and see that each of those represents where there's going to be an obstacle. So I can see there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I know that this obstacle course has eight obstacles on it. It has eight obstacles. All right, let's go ahead and look at page 272. And by the way, we started out on page 271, if you haven't figured that out yet. All right, so this is page 272. And as someone count, uh, commented this morning, they thought that looked like Dora the Explorer, just with a little bit longer hair which it sort of does. All right, but in this second problem, we have Cat and Ann. They practice the rope climb at the obstacle course. The rope is three yards long, and there is a knot every one-third of a mile. How many knots are there? So I can see that we have this long uh, rope, and it has a bunch of knots in it. All right, so I want to write a equation that models Right, I know that this is three yards long, so that's my dividend. And then every one-third of a yard, it has a knot tied in it. So it's been divided up into lengths of one-third of a, a yard. And once I solve that, I'm going to know just how many knots are in this rope. So that's going to give me how many knots there are on this uh, obstacle. So just use the number line to represent the division equation. Well, I know that 3 is my dividend, so I need to mark off three whole units on my number line. This is 0, 1, 2, and 3. I'm going to 
stop right there. And then I um, need to represent the divisor by drawing and labeling the tick marks at one third. So I'm dividing by a third. So each of these have to be divided up into three equal parts. All right, and now I'm going to uh, label those one third, two thirds. Okay, three thirds is one. Then one and one third, one and two thirds, one and three thirds would be two. Two and one third, two and, whoops, two thirds, and then three, which is where I'm going to stop. How many knots are on the rope? Well, if I count each of these segments, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I know there's going to be nine uh, knots down the length of that rope. What related multiplication equation can you use to solve that? Okay, well, I know that since each of these sections, and there are three whole yards there, and each yard has three parts in it, I know that three times three is nine. So a related multiplication problem, I can say, is I had three whole units, and I'm multiplying it by the three parts that I had in each section, which equaled nine. All right, let's go on down to the check understanding. It says write a division equation to model the situation, then complete the number line and write a related multiplication equation to solve the, the problem. All right, so I'm, not only am I going to use a model, but then I'm going to write a multiplication equation that's related to the division problem to solve the problem with it. So in this problem, it says we have a walking trail that's four miles long. There are benches along the trail every half of a mile. How many benches are there? I'm looking at this number line, and I know that I'm going to have four miles, and it has to be divided up into half mile lengths. And so I'm going to mark off 0, 1 mile, 2 miles, 3 miles, 4 miles. And then each of those miles have to be divided into half so that that shows where a bench is going to be. So I'm going to go up half a mile, there's going to be a bench. Another half mile, there's a bench. Another half mile, there's a bench. Another half mile, a bench, a bench, and a bench. So I'm going to go one half, that's one, this is one and one half, two, two and one half, three, three and one half, four. All right, and that just marks off my tick marks. When I go to see what my answer is, I'm going to say, well, how many benches are there? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I know there are going to be eight benches. All right, now I'm asked to write a related multiplication problem that can solve this. Well, I know I have four groups, and in each of those groups, it's separated into two parts. So that's going to be four times two. And so four times two is eight. So this is the related multiplication problem that solves this division problem. Okay, let's take a look at page um, 273. And here we have a uh, family, Dwayne and his family, and they're playing this game and they have a bunch of tiles there. And it says Dwayne scores 11 points. Each tile match is one third of a point. Model the situation with an equation. All right, well, I know that Dwayne has got 11 points and each tile match is worth one third. So he gets one third of a point from having a match, then he gets one third of a point again for getting another match, then he gets one third of a point for getting another match. Now that would equal one point out of his 11. So in order to find out how many tile matches he has, I'm going to have to say 11 divided by the one third, and it's going to tell me how many times he has uh, made tile matches. All right, so I'm going to... Um, model that with my equation, and then I'm going to answer it with a related multiplication problem. I know that I'm going to have 11 groups, and I know that since it's divided into thirds, each of those groups are going to be divided into three equal parts, so I know that's going to be 11 times 3, which I know is 33. So 
So this tells me that 11 divided by 1 third is equal to 33. All right, now you remember in class we were saying that drop, change, flip in order to uh, find the answer to a division problem with a, a fraction in it. Well, that's essentially what this is doing. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. So when we did the drop, change, flip, we said our dividend doesn't change. It's going to stay the same. Just drop it down. And then we change division to a multiplication, just like we have here. And then I flipped my one-third, and if I flip that and verb it, it equals to 3 over 1. Now I know when I solve this multiplication problem that 3 over 1 is the same exact thing as 3. So this means 11 times 3 over 1, which is 3. So that's, whoops, Ms. Howard multiplied that correctly. It's 33. So it equals 33. So in class, we were talking about that old school way that your parents learned how to do it. It's essentially the same thing that we are looking at here when we write a related multiplication problem. Okay, so in this problem, we have a uh, Mila who swims three miles at the pool. She stops to take a break every one half of a mile. How many times has Mila stopped to take a break? It says model that with an equation. Well, I know that the total amount here if there's the dividend which is three miles and every half of a mile she's going to take a break so I'm going to divide that by one half and I'm going to get find out what my answer is well I know that if I change that to a multiplication problem I'm going to have three groups and each of my groups will be divided up into two equal parts which is going to be six so I know this is going to be six all right now it says to represent the dividend divisor and quotient on this number line. So my dividend is three whole miles, and so I'm going to mark that on here, zero, one, two, and three. There's my three miles. I'm going to divide it into halves. Each of those whole units are divided into a half. And then I can see that my quotient is going to be the number of these little segments I have. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I get 6 for my answer. Alright, how many times does she stop to take a break? Well, she's going to stop 6 times. Because my uh, quotient is going to give me that information. Alright, let's take a look at this uh, number 4. It says divide and then write a related multiplication. All right, well, in this problem then, when I say 4 divided by 5 equals n, I need to think, hmm, what is the answer to that? Well, I know 4 times 5 is 20. And so I know that 4 divided up into fifths, and have 4 groups, so divided up into 5 equal parts, that's going to be 4 times 5, which is 20. So the answer to my problem is 20, and the related multiplication is 4 times 5 is 20. Okay, in this problem, they put the n first. That doesn't change what my dividend and divisor are. 8 is my dividend, and I'm dividing by 1 third. Alright, so I need to divide, but to solve it, I'm going to write a related multiplication equation. I know I'm going to have 8 groups, and since I'm splitting each of those groups into 3 parts, it's going to be, I'm going to multiply a 3. I'm going to have 8 groups that have 3 little parts in each one, and I know 8 times 3 is 24. So, my answer is 24. How do I know? Because I can use multiplication to figure that out. Right here I have 4 divided by 1 ninth. I'm thinking of 4 groups. Each group is divided up into 9 equal parts. So 4 times 9 is 36. So I know that 4 divided by 1 ninth is going to be 36. Okay, we also know that if we started with a whole number, that there's a pattern that occurs. If I have a whole number divided by a fraction, then my answer is going to be a whole number, not a fraction. All right, and so that was a pattern that we see occurring over and over and over. On number seven, you have an oceanic probe. It descends one half a kilometer each minute. How many minutes will it take the probe to go 10 kilometers into the deepest part of the ocean? Well, I know we want to know how 
the, it's going to descend 10 kilometers and it does a half a kilometer each minute. So that's going to be 10 kilometers split up into one half kilometer each minute. I'm going to solve that. 10, I know that 10 times 2 is 20. So 10 divided by 1 half. If I take 10, I divide it into halves. There's going to be 20 of those halves. So my answer is 20. Right, it's going to take it 20 minutes to descend 10 kilometers. All right, let's go on to the on your own. Here we have um, each bag of crackers in a box represents 1 15th of the box. How many bags of cro crackers or crockers? How many bags of crackers are in three boxes? All right, well, I know I have three whole boxes, and each bag is 1 15th. So if I divide it into one by 1 15th, I'm going to be able to know the uh, number of crackers that are in three boxes. So I'm going to write a related multiplication problem. I need to be thinking 3 times 15. Well, let me write that up here because I want to do two-digit multiplication. I know 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times 1 is 3 plus the one I carried is 4. So I know my answer is going to be 45. Now this one is a little bit more complicated. It's a real thinking problem. It says for what whole number values of a is 17 divided by 1a less than 17? So it's asking us, what number could I put down here in the place of a that would make uh, 17 divided by some fraction? I'm going to just say, I'm going to put a 2 down there. And it, it's saying, would it be less than 17 if I get my answer? And really, no, no matter what number I put down there for a dividend, since I know I'm going to end up multiplying 17 times the 2, or 17 times a 3, or 17 times whatever number is down there, that's going to be a number larger than 17. So it will never be a number less than 17. 2 times 1 is 2 and 3. So that's 36. So that's definitely not less than 17. So it will never uh, be a number less than 17, it's a number that will result less than 17. And we, we discussed that one this morning in our Zoom meeting, and it was a little bit confusing um, to, to understand that. Okay, in this problem we have Valerie, she has 6 feet of red ribbon and she has 25 feet of blue ribbon. And she's going to cut them into uh, equal pieces. Now that's just giving us some background information. Here's our question. How many pieces of red ribbon does she cut if each is 1 12th of a foot long? I need to go back up here and find which one was red ribbon. Alright, I see she has 6 feet of red ribbon. So if I have 6 feet of red ribbon, that's my dividend. I'm going to divide it into pieces that are 1 12th. All right, I need to know how many pieces would that be? Well, I'm going to use a related multiplication problem to solve that. I know that if I have six, um, six feet and each foot, I'm going to cut it into 12s. That means I'm going to have 12 little pieces for each foot. So that's the same as six times 12. And I know that six times 12 is 72. So she's going to end up with 72 little pieces of ribbon. Okay, and then we have a similar problem here. How many pieces of blue ribbon does she cut if each is one-third of a foot long? Okay, so I need to go back up here and find out well, how long was the blue ribbon. The blue ribbon is 25 feet. So I have to take my 25 feet, divide them up into pieces that are one-third of a foot long, all right, I'm going to use a related multiplication problem to come up with my answer. I've got 25 feet. If I cut them into thirds, that means I'm going to have three pieces in each foot. So that's going to be 25 times 3, which I know is 75. So I know that 25 divided into thirds is going to be 75 little pieces of ribbon. Okay, 11 and 12. Again, we are dividing and then writing a related multiplication problem to solve. 
So here I have 14 divided by 1 third. My related problem is for multiplication is going to be 14 times 3. And then I'm going to get my answer, and that will be solved. Number 12, 5 divided by 1 6. I know that um, my related multiplication problem is going to be 5 times 16, and that's going to equal a number. And so that will be my solution. So you're going to figure those two out yourself. Okay, and then this last one is an open-ended question, so it doesn't mean there's one answer, but it says Maggie has a goal of jogging 100 miles. The distance she runs each day is the same unit fraction. So she runs a fraction of a mile each day. So she doesn't want run one mile. She runs some fraction less than that. What are some possible fractions of a mile she can run each day and the number of days it will take her to reach her goal? Okay, well, I'm going to say, let's say um, that Maggie runs half a mile each day. So that means I would have to take the 100. She says, okay, I want to run 100 miles. If I run a half a mile each day, how many days will that take me? Well, I know that 100 times 2 is 200, so it's going to take her 200 days to run that. All right, so let's say she said I want to run 100 miles, and I want to uh, only run um, one third of a mile each day. All right, well, it's going to take her even longer because I know 100 times 3 is going to be 300 days that she's going to need to run that 100 miles. All right, so there's any number of unit fractions you could use to solve that problem out with, but that's a long time to uh, run 100 miles. All right, so good luck on this assignment. Um, try these two out. Go to your Google Forms to complete lesson um, 11.2 and um, you'll be done. So see you tomorrow in the Zoom meeting where we will be on our next lesson. Okay, see you. Bye.